Hello everybody and welcome to your fourth chapter in your Java EE 7 tutorial. Today we'll be talking about injection. Injection is used to access references to objects without having to instantiate them directly. Instead, injection allows the object to mark fields as injection points and let the container do the work of getting the object reference. This simplifies your code and decouples it from the implementation of its dependencies. Now let's take a look at one example of using injection to decouple your implementations from the dependencies. Let's say you have you and you want to build your treehouse. You have a few tools over here and you want to go and get it. So let's go get the tool and you have to move it all the way back to your treehouse. And of course to get the tool inside you want to open it up and then you can use the tool. But let's say that you have multiple packages. This is a huge problem because you have to go back and forth and back and forth. So you think of a great plan. Why don't I just hire somebody to get the box that I'm looking for? And he goes ahead, gets the box, and then he can just open up the box, right? And then he just gives you the open box with the tool inside. Now this is exactly what JEE does. What you would be is your uh, Java bean, so your Java class. The, these packages would be your uninstantiated objects, and the open package would be your instantiated object. The name of the package would be the JNDI namespace, so every package has its own uh, name, and they're called uh, JNDI namespace. And this blue person right here, your friendly guy, he is your container, which retrieves the object reference, so these are all references, and instantiates them, which is opening the box. So this speech bubble right here telling the container what to do, this is called marking a field as an injection point. This is where injection is super useful because you can go back and forth and get every single box, right? What you would do rather is say you want this and the container does the work for you. Now let's take a look at some resource injection. Resource injection enables you to inject any resource available in the JNDI namespace into any container managed object, such as a servlet, an enterprise bean, or a managed bean. So again, like I said before, a resource is your package, JNDI namespace is the name of the package, and the container managed, it means just means that the container can access this resource. And the, uh, the container managed objects are the servlet enterprise bean and managed bean. Now there are a few resources that you can use that you can get, like data sources, connectors, and custom connectors available in the JNDI namespace, which means that all of these need their own JNDI name. So let's take a look at field-based injection of the data source. So here you can see that this data source object has an, uh, has an at resource and it has its JNDI name as default data source. There's another way that you can do this, however, as a method-based injection of the data source object, which means that you put your at resource right on top of your method right here, instead of putting it right on top of your field. This is why this is called a method-based injection, and this is a field-based injection. Now, one thing that you wanna be careful of is this is not type safe. What that means is that uh, if you use this injection uh, and resolve it by the name, if you call this by the name, it may give you a runtime error. So to show this example, I've made an example over here. Let's say you have you again, and you want a hammer. So your container goes and gets, well, your hammer. And it returns you the hammer. And you realize that, wait, this is not the hammer. But the container did nothing wrong. It looked for the thing that, uh, that has the name hammer. So it went, got it, and gave it to you. So of course, this is not a hammer. So this gives an error. But this is what it means that to have a runtime error, where you're asking for something, your container gets something, but it's not what you wanted. Now let's take a look at the other type of injection, dependency injection. This one enables you to turn regular Java classes 
in to manage beans and to inject them into any other managed beans. Dependency injection in Java E defines scopes, which determine the life cycle of the objects that the container instantiates and injects. For example, you can have a, con a currency converter that only needs a single client request, which means that you have a uh, you have a request sent to the server, and the server sends the response back, and you only need that much of a life cycle. So it's a single client request. A shopping cart, however, has to deal with multiple requests and multiple responses. Therefore, it is a multiple client request or a session. So here's an example of that. Here you can see that you can define your managed bean with a defined scope. And here the defined scope would be request scoped, which means it takes care of only one request. You can then inject this class, or this managed bean in this case, into this managed bean, your my servlet. You can then inject it using the at inject. This is actually type safe because they're resolved by the type you can see over here. Now, to give an example of that, let's take a look at our guy over here again. So now he's smarter and he asks for a screwdriver, literally the screwdriver. The type is called screwdriver. So your container goes and gets the actual screwdriver. And then you're happy because this is exactly what you wanted. And this is what it means to be type safe. Now to go over again the differences between resource and dependency injection, Resource injection uses the JNDI name, which means that your resources are named using the JNDI format, and your container takes those um, resources through the JNDI name. Dependency injection, however, uses the type, which you have to provide on your own. Uh, resource injection also injects using the JNDI resources, so resources that are named with JNDI. And dependency injection can inject any layman regular class. And resource injection is not type safe. And dependency injection is type safe. And that's it. That's all there is about injection for the fourth chapter in your Java E7 tutorial. So next chapter, we'll be talking about packaging. And I'll see you in the next video.